This is the story about Chris Jenkins, light welterweight boxer who's attempting to become British champion. He's fought his way up from a small town in South Wales and is aiming for the world stage. We travel down to Garnant where we spent the day with Chris Jenkins and his family to give you an insight into the day in the life as a boxer. Chris's morning begins at 7.30. First it's sorting out the kids and getting them off to school before starting on his own work for the day. It's fair to say that Chris isn't a morning person. This is every morning. Is this your daily routine, is it? Kids, get for school, warm up. I said I eat their breakfast, but I don't. Chris has a busy day ahead of him. Every day. Is this about the same time you get up? Yeah, about half seven, eight o'clock. I know I don't like mornings. Chris starts his training for the day with an intense run around the hills in his local area of South Wales. How about it? Done like you know, it's working. At good pace, about six million million miles. It's just good pace. Um now, now shower, bit of breakfast first, shower. Go down and see Bot Wales, Le Louisa, my new physio so a bit of treatment off her. And then to chill out and the gym later. Chris isn't just doing this for himself. With his wife and twin children at his side, he's doing this for his family. If I'm honest with you, be the mall, I guess. I know it's only over the park, but it's like, when I'm tired, I just wanna lay in the house and just chill out, rest up, ready for camp. But it's like, if you see them now, they're living here. It's a park, you know what I mean? Mm. Not if we're spending money, but I don't care about the money, but I just care about them having their little bit of fun, so. If it's half hour, it's half hour, you know, we usually go down throw rocks in the river with them. You know, just keep them busy now, because at the end of the day, the kids, and they, they, if, if you keep them in the house, they're going to be cooped up in here, so. And it's, you know, it's, it's part of bonding for us all. It's just freaking nuts, aren't they? Helen is Chris's wife of six years, and she's always been very supportive of his career, following him from day one, where he was an amateur boxer. Um, I knew he was a boxer. Um, I didn't really know much about him, to be honest. I just knew that he was a boxer, and knew that he wasn't, you know, he lived in Garnet, so I was about it. And he used to work next door to me. What? I used to be a hairdresser and he was a physio and we all used to stare at it. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it really. What do you think of him as uh, being a boxer? Was he a pro boxer when he got him? No, he's an amateur. Yeah. So, um, I, follow, I've, I followed him from day one, I have, but I never really got the amateurs, to be honest. He used to go away. You know, I'd never, I, like, at one point I didn't see him for a whole month because he was away. But, I would, you know, I'd watch it on tally, but I, I never got the score in. Chris began training with his uncle at the young age of 11, following in the footsteps of his older uh, brother. What was he like as an 11 year old? A cheeky little son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, he's worse then than he is now. <laughs> That's hard to believe. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, well, he, he came up here because he was getting into a lot of trouble in school and stuff like that. And, and, uh, his mother, his mother's my uh, my niece, like you know. So, I, but I hadn't met Chris before that, like yeah. Because you know, we've quite a big family, and uh, we haven't looked back since. We're doing good there, now, yeah. Good work. Chris had a turbulent school life. His attendance was poor and he was a self-confessed class clown. With little to do in the South Wales Valleys, he managed to find his passion in boxing and has turned his life around. Did you go to school on you, Chris? No, I went to, I was born in Pontetowie, next village down, by the Bionis I went to um, Middlebrook Primary School for a few years. 
And we moved in because of family arguments. They ended up in a Stradowin. Then they ended up in Bernamon School for the last year. And then I went senior school. I went to Amma Valley Comp. I didn't like it, but My tenders were the best. I was like, for I was, I was never brainy. I hated school. I wouldn't say if I had many friends in school, I had my little bit that I was happy with. But, you know, it's, school was shit. Did you uh, come up with any qualifications? Uh, I think I had a C in English. You know, I can't even speak English. It's a bad news. Welsh. I think I had art, I had a C in, but... Did you ever, like, fight in school? I was always naughty, like the class clown. Like every time I'd go to certain classes, I'd have been chucked out just for being a class idiot. Like I don't have them firecrackers, I smash them in the class, I just bang. So you don't need master's office after school detention again. So it's like I was a class clown, and I'm glad I finished school, and I did. Chris has a promising future and is aiming for the top. But here he reflects on some of his amateur oh, fights. I'm the amateur of the old amateur days. Do you ever watch any of your old amateur fights back? No, not really, no. Yeah, so me and Tony were there in New Ireland. 2009. Who was it? It was in Manor Park. Chris Jenkins and Tony Pace. An exhibition. <laughs> I can't remember having an exhibition with them, that's how long ago it was. Yeah. No, um, yeah, look, Alex Hughes. No, he's doing well. He was there. Zach Davis, who's pro now. Yeah. You know, we should mix up with some good boys. You know, poor Thomas O passed away, can't say, like. He was there, part of old Jim. Liam Williams, but not Liam Williams, you know, he's one from Swansea. Yeah. Um, Danny Griffiths, now he's pro. Yeah. He's been there. Oh, so some good shows if, uh, if you could put some of them boys on on a, on a pro show, now it'd be a good show, wouldn't it? Yeah, good, it'd be a great show, to be honest. One of Chris's proudest moments as an amateur boxer was when he represented the country in the Commonwealth Games. He didn't come away with the result he wanted, but he's always thought his style is more suited to the pro game. Obviously representing the Commonwealth Games, not that... 2006, I was about 17, baby. And then fair play Tony Williams fought my case. And as one man I like, know I do respect millions and millions and I still keep in touch with him now. No former head coach of Wales and he done he made Welsh boxing class, like you know, he's old school. Some people didn't like it but it worked. You know, but um, I think that was a proud moment, two thousand six going all the way through the other side of the world. And then losing then against a good fight against um, the kid who won in two thousand and two. At that weight, so you know, I lost. I still had a good little time, and I went there. And then I obviously went to 2010 India, where I was expected to win a medal, kind of thing, because of I went to competition before it and I won the silver in it. But then obviously, it didn't go well, you know. I got beat 7 0, but I fought no way. Well, you know, what's life, you know. I'm good as names, yeah. I had the pro style from early on, so. Well, you learn, it's more about my apprenticeship in the amateurs and turn over pro. I've done my apprenticeship in the pro at least four or five fights ago. Which has been taking a little bit longer to get there, but i got a British little fight now, so... Rock and roll on. Chris has always been extremely dedicated to his sport, even from a very young age. Where many children his age would feign illness to skip training, Chris would still go to the gym even when he was ill. First one there. First oh, never missed it. Never missed training. Right? Never missed training. Even when his body should go. Chicken box. Yeah. Ah, exactly. Your chicken box once. Yeah. I know he told you he got two weeks off, Chris, because you could chicken box. Give me two days and I'll be up there. He was in there within a day and a half. Chris yeah. box, no doubt, he was at training. And he was plastered from head to toe. Chris's support extends outside the family and into the local community. 
His neighbours have taken a keen interest in his career and say it's inspirational to have an achiever like Chris living in the area. Oh, it's nice to have somebody that's going to do well living in the estate, you know. Nice and I believe person. he's going to bring the title back. I really do. Yeah. Because he, he is good from what we've seen him. Yeah. You know? I just feel sorry for his wife. <laughs> it must be like living with two kids. With three kids, sorry. <laughs> When he moved here, we started following him, followed him on the Sky Sports Prize Fighter. Yeah. And we've just followed him ever since. What do you think of him in Prize Fighter? Good. Excellent. Outstanding. Yeah. Absolutely outstanding. Yeah. Could you believe it that you know, somebody moved in close to you and no, then? No. I said I to mean, the wife at the time, he was a future world champion, yeah. yeah. Just I hope mean, he remembers the little so people. He's so down to earth. They're all, you know, the whole family are down to earth, you know. He's not big headed or anything. You know, he's really down to earth. You see him running down the cycle track. Yeah. yeah. Always, uh, he always, always stops and has a chat then always. Helen's same, always a stop, stop and have really a chat. Really nice, really yeah. nice. I see you've got the, the Team Rock and Roller t-shirt on. Yes, yeah. Have you ever been to any of his fights? No, no, no. We just bought it to support him, yeah. you know? We've had that so when he's world tight we can sell it we on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> One of Chris's biggest achievements as a pro boxer was becoming the third Welshman to win the prize fighter competition. Are you well happy with the performance on? Two right, seven first career and that one is all. Uh, I think he's rocked around with it. It's like the first time I've watched it since a fight. Um, what a whirlwind start this was for Chris Jenkins. This has been. I know he's done well to stand up to it. He's been rocked a couple of times. How many times have you watched this back, Chris? Eh? First time. You haven't watched this back before? Once. The day I come home on the Sunday, when all the guests had a surprise party back here when I was coming home, I was like, go to watch it. It was too mad and I was like, so I watched it. I was happy. And you haven't seen the film? Once. I don't like watching all my last fights. I watched. Uh, Do you like watching any of your fights back? Only once. That's it. One to say. Boxing can be an extremely dangerous sport. Over the years, Chris's parents have come to terms with this and accept that this is the career their son has chosen. To be honest, it looks good now, it's part of life now. It's like John Owen, he died in the ring, didn't he? Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, to me, that's his, that's his job. That's his, that's what he wants to do. That's his job. He loves this, so he does what he wants, like, you know? Yeah. I can't tell him what to do, he's old enough now. Whilst training for the biggest fight of his career, Chris collapsed outside his gym, needing urgent hospital treatment. His mum Mandy received the news and was horrified. Michael phoned me and said, have you heard about Chris? I said no. And he said, oh, don't panic. He said, and what are you going to think when somebody tells you don't panic on the phone? Yeah. You're going to totally panic then, aren't you? And um, I tried getting hold of Andrew when they were down the hospital. Couldn't get hold of him because he, like, he left his mobile in the house. So next thing I phoned Johnny back. He said, um, they just got there, he said, in actual emergencies in Morriston. So I phoned Helen and his wife down the house. She said, uh, do you want me to come up and pick you up to take you down? I said, no, it's fine, I said. And we'll be back now for you to get down there. Well, fair play, he stayed down there all night with them. And he came back and at half his eleven the following morning mm. and told me what had happened. It was Chris's father, Andrew, who discovered him collapsed at the gym. What, what was going through your mind? Well, I only went up there to give him a letter, to be honest. I've been up there for a long time. And I, I seen him coming out of the car. He looked, looked rough. And as he walked in, in, into the gym itself, like in the corridor, I, I went on the corner and found him on the floor. I thought, Jesus Christ, what's the matter with you? He was spazzing up, like, you know, really sweating and like, shit, to be honest. And uh, Ronnie, the trainer, come and everybody come. They picked him up, physical four of us quickly picked him up and put him in a chair. And he just, uh, 
pulsing and you're in pain, like you know, really in pain. You can see it, like don't mess messing about. But in the end, we decided that I just took a sip in the hospital. You know what I mean? Um, you had to pull out your last like Chris with tight on yours due to illness. Can you tell us, you know, a bit about that? Um, Tuesday night, I come back from a run. Didn't feel too good, but I didn't feel too bad. Just for too. Maybe just because the weight's down, I'm feeling a bit shitty. Went to bed by about half past eleven. Woke up about <clears throat> half one and like really dry throat and it's for so like I can't stay. So I drank about a few mouthfuls of milk. So I, they reckon that's good for so for drink milk. Woke up the next morning and I like, had really bad stomach and I was basically on Wednesday morning. I was just shitting like a race off monsoon and I wasn't even eating anything. I hadn't even ate nothing. So then when I was, every time I was shitting, I was coming down, I was drinking water. I, I drank a duo light as well, that comes straight for me again. About 3 o'clock in the afternoon, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Went to do a run, only the small one. Uh, a three mile it would have been. I got just down to the corner road there. And I felt my legs bump underneath me. So I kind of held on the bridge and let myself sit down. So there for about 15-20 minutes. Trying to get back up, I had nothing in my legs, and I thought, whoa, what's going on here? Got home, jumped in the freezing cold bath, so I thought, because my temperature was stupidly high. And then, but I was freezing cold as well, I was boiling off, so I got, <coughs> when they went to pick me up to go to the gym, as I was, as I was in the past, you see the guys, I started having cramps, like in my arms, my legs, all from my body, and I thought, oh, this ain't right, like, but. I managed to go out the car and as I was walking into the gym, my old man was being me and he's like, Chris, I go let you. I said, Dad, fuck it, let I said, grab me, I'm going. He goes, what's wrong? I just blacked out. I was out for a couple of seconds. Come back around, I couldn't move. I was just paralyzed on the floor. They picked me up, took me to the hospital. They said it was all down to a uh, stomach virus. And basically, my body just said, do you know what? Like, I'm going to shut down on you, you're not doing nothing. My blood levels, my blood levels are low. I had a temperature of over 40. Um, obviously, I was slightly dehydrated, like every boxer's and they make weight. But the main reason for it was because of the stomach bug. Chris is regarded on the circuit as one of the hardest trainers out there. Whilst outside the ring, he's known as a funny guy who likes to have a laugh and a joke. Inside the ring, things couldn't be more different. Chris takes his training and his sport very seriously. You, you often first into the gym? No, only certain days, like on a Wednesday, because of... I try to come gosh rugby fellas, pre-season now on Tuesdays. So then I get the keys from the Tuesday night, but usually it's morning here, or Steffi opens up. Hmm. It won't be long now, I'm early, I pissed the bed. What's, uh, what's going through your mind first when you walk into a gym? Time to, time to get to work. There's my job. No, I'm not going to have to... I'm not going to disguise any corners. I'm here to do what i got to do is to be super fit. Be ready for the fight. That's what I'm doing. This is the train. Nothing else, no, there's no messing about them. Oh, look, I missed my friend, they were the box. That's a good one. It's, uh, uh, if you have an off night, what, you know, what's your training like again? Uh, you always try and give 100% or do you yeah. try and slap or what? Always give 100%. If I'm tired, like it, oh, I don't know. I'd still be the one that throws the most punches in the gym. Has Ronnie ever got to get on to you? Mm. Nothing, no, we're asking. Mm. I, 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 don't, I don't believe in going soft. At the end of the day, you've got to train hard to be the best. You know what I mean? What's your skills when you do you yeah, no. As an amateur, Chris has had over 80 fights and won more than 60 of them. As a pro, Chris is undefeated. What kind of stuff are you going to be doing today in the gym? Um, it's six weeks, six and a half weeks out from fight night, so I'll just be ticking over, nothing too mad. I'll just be working. I'll just be working on little things, that's it. Hmm. I'll be right. 
Do you mean the amateurs in the gym? Yeah, to be fair, there's a few. Like, you know, on a busy night, there could be up to 10, 12 amateurs. Do you help out for them and encourage them and stuff? Or? No, obviously, not as much as the coaches, but if, if I see them, you know, obviously, you can't work. I know, mm. in a different way. Yeah. A bit more meaner, but, you know, at the end of the day, they're doing what they can, but I got to concentrate on my job, and this is my job. You know. What do uh, what the amateurs think of you? The kids? They don't like me, do they? Are they used to you here, or? Yeah, yes, and all like do they like me. Because some of them, they still just do it, like walk past the bag. They're like, fuck, get away, I'm out in the bag, like, but, you know, it's part and parcel, you know? It gets you used to end up when you have a fight. They some plonker acting rings right up. You're used to it, kind of thing, from the gym, so. It's not too bad, I enjoy it. I enjoy it, you know what I mean? The kids, I like to think they look up to me a little bit. Mm. You know what I mean? But the bones when they bounce when they them, I'm only about that tall, so you know, yeah. I have to look up near the crest. Yeah. <laughs> when, when you was training, was there any pros in the gym then? Yeah, smidge. JCD, class. What did you used to think of them? I used to be scared of him, but I wanted to be exactly like him. Yeah. But then obviously, I, I don't know what happened, he lost the fight when they were nuts. Retired, and then I was at them, but smidge was. Like a role model when I first started. But now I want to be like, I don't know, fly me well, Yeah. Do you see yourself as a role model for kids, you? Yeah? I do hope so. I know, I know I don't swear that much. I know I don't swear them in the gyms. It's one good thing. Mm. But yeah, I'd like them to see what hard work does. Hard work pays off, you know what I mean? Yeah. Hard work in the gym makes, you know, you've got to work hard to reap the rewards kind of thing, you know? So they can see that I've worked hard. I lost a few fights as an amateur, don't get me wrong, but as a pro I'm working hard and the success is shown for itself. Yeah. Boxing trainer Ronnie Morris has been training Chris since he was a schoolboy. What a lot of people don't realise is Ronnie is Chris's uncle and has been fighting his corner all his life. Ronnie is always at Chris's ringside, not only as his biggest support, but as his biggest critic, always looking for ways to improve. The boxer never stops learning. Steph Davis is Chris's pad man and he's been working with him for over a decade. He's seen Chris develop and grow from an amateur boxer and explains how Chris's hard work and dedication has only ever got stronger. Um, I go back to 2005 and start on the pads with him. So I uh, finished boxing in 2004. And then I started uh, coaching with Ronnie in the gym then. Yeah. And from 2005 onwards then, I've been in the past 10 years. So it's been, uh, it's been quite a while now. So you've been with him since amateur and seen him switch over? Yeah, yeah. But what was he like you know, training as an amateur? Oh, the most dedicated person you can find, to be honest. He's just as he is now. He lives and breathes it. Yeah. You know, he's... Um, Nobody works harder. He you know, he just gets on with it. Like, you know, he's uh, he lives for it, sleeps it, eats it. Like no. you, you know yourself, you've been in the gym a long time, and you've seen lots of people come and go. Yeah. And have you ever seen anybody who, who trains as hard as him? Or no, to be honest, no. No, I think with Chris, like, you know, he's meant to be champion. To be honest, you know, he's got a champion's mentality. You know, it's like anything he does, you know, if you go running with him, <laughs> he won't leave you win. You know, he's got to win at whatever he does and I suppose that's, that's what makes a champion in the day. Chris hasn't always had the best of luck during his career and has had to be extremely headstrong to make the transition from amateur to pro boxer. Uncle and trainer Ronnie has memories of some of the ups and downs. As an amateur, Ron, what was he like as an amateur? Uh, he's quite good. He's, uh, you know, he boxed at the top. He, uh, he had uh, two Commonwealth Games. He had, um, he had a four, uh, four Nations gold medal out, out in Ireland, which is very hard to get out there, and beating the Nigerian boy out there as well. Uh, he, he's had a lot of bad luck as well as an amateur, to be honest with you. He's always in the Commonwealth Games. He's been drawn twice, once against uh, an Olympic bronze gold medalist. In the first round, and the other time he boxed the champion in the first in his first fight, hmm. so, which is you know a bit unlikely it was like. And uh, on the whole, as a as an amateur, he boxed for Wales. Oh, I, 
I can't remember how many times, but I think he won every fight that he boxed with Wales for in, in, G, in Great Britain and you know, in, in just internationals, not in um, multinations. I think he won every fight. One of his best amateur fights, I'd say, was um, when we were out in Thailand, the Kings Cup in Thailand, he boxed the Olympi Olympic silver medalist. And he took him down to the wire, like, and he was unlucky not to get to the decision out there. Even uh, Terry Smith reckoned he had, he had had it, but uh, he didn't get the decision. Uh, after that, well, he just got fed up with, uh, with the amateur boxing, with, with all the bad uh, decisions he was getting and stuff like that in the championships and, and all the politics in the amateur boxing, and so he decided to turn pro then. Although Chris is one prize fighter and was the WBC light welterweight champion, he still struggles for exposure and publicity. I, think, uh, I don't think they know uh, what level he's at and how good he is. You know, uh, few of the local, you know, the local boys that buy the tickets, the day, they know about him. But uh, in general, no, you know, our local paper, like you know, it, 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 he doesn't get he doesn't get mentioned in it, like you know, which is it's a, it's a travesty like, that he doesn't get mentioned. Yeah. It's, it's, well, it's disgusting you know, for somebody around the area here who's fighting for the British title. Because I, 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 I can't remember anybody from around here. The only uh, from this valley, from the Amman Valley, the only one who's fought and won the British is Robert Dick. But he's from the you know Cross Arms area. Robert was, yeah. and uh, he just doesn't get any exposure whatsoever. Yeah. No. Yeah. But uh, I, th I think things might change now. I, I think they'll change after the British, uh, yeah. hof hopefully. Anyway. Uh, I think they'll, they'll find out how good Chris is when he's on television at night. Today's long training session at the gym is over, and with six weeks to go, Chris is happy with the results. Good, yeah, you know, I've done eight and a part in. I'd go to work, to be fair. The tactics, you know, we were doing was obviously for nurse, but the work rate ain't going to be as high as it would be, but we're still working on a high work rate. Um, yeah, I pissed the eight, they could easily done another two or four, but it was too early to be doing any more than eight. It's no party in one go, otherwise I'll be picking too soon, but all good, but. Chris is happy to be home, but far from relaxing, the twins are ready and waiting to keep him on his toes. Good Good fight then. Yeah. Who's like come home? Yeah. After a busy day I've had, I'm looking at half past eight. They don't fight in your way. You want to Is this like a typical day out for you and Chris? Yes, it is. Yeah. Maybe wow. mine sometimes because I'm on my own. <laughs> yeah. Quite yeah. epic, isn't it? Caught him on a good day today because he's been around. <laughs> Normally he's just in and out like a yo-yo, yeah. Yeah, usually I'm in and out. They got other things to do, but today was quiet day. In a way. So now I'm gonna make some food. And then she'll give him a bath. Now you are John, unboxing me in the UK and to everyone who's watching this little documentary, I hope you enjoyed. Just see exactly what our life as a boxer actually goes through on a day-to-day -day basis in, in, in a lead and the run-up to a, a big fight. And um, off the bed for me. John, get out my house now. Right? But no, seriously, like, I hope everyone enjoyed it. And if it was boring, then tough shit. <laughs> I'm gonna bed, but um, cheers, John. I'm cheers to Box Media UK. That's the life of a boxer by each day. Boom. Oh.